represent Alabama, my residence, that crimson tide, that elephant. Alabama, my stomping ground, from Birmingham through Huntsville, from Gump Town through Mobile. Taking over Bama like Nick Saban, we a nightmare like Wes Craven. Nightmare like Wes Craven. Flexing hard like Arm and Hammer. Still speaking that country grammar. This the heart of the South from Alabama. Hit the field like it's wartime. Now watch the tide come rolling in. And that power eye formation, boy. I'm about to go for the strike on first to ten. And that run game on stick and moving them wide out. They on jet fuel. And that old line, it don't back down. And that quarterback, he gon' act a fool. Taking over Bama like Nick Saban. We a nightmare like Wes Craven. On the field, boy, we be misbehaving. That defense gon' break it down. And we squad up and go pound for pound. Still number one in the nation, boy. And we ready, set to go round for round. True facts, you can check the stats. Clutch like Jalen, boy. I know it hurts that we the direct in the SEC and the CLP. Cause we bomb first. Showtime on the big stage. When it's crunch time, we make big plays. Four for one on the goal line. With 10 seconds left, it's a run play. Alabama, I represent Alabama, my residence That crimson tide, that elephant Alabama, my stomping ground From Birmingham through Huntsville From Gump Town through Mobile Taking on Alabama like Nick Saban We a nightmare like Wes Craven Flexing hard like Arm and Hammer Still speaking that country grammar This the heart of the South from Alabama I'm from sweet home Alabama Where the skies are all so blue And you better be on your bed When you see the tide rolling through Yeah, you know we play to win Nah, no, we ain't gonna lose And you gotta be hard by it Play with us, you gon' get brewed Hey, we going to the ship Going to the ship Look like all my trying to get us caught We ain't gonna need trip Cause we taking over like Nick Saban We undefeated, they big And we don't take days off Working until we get paid off World is the time we gon' take off First down to the field goal We'll take it all for the win though Down said, how you gon' win, bro? Hey, what's that school we gon' win for? Alabama, I represent Alabama, my residence That crimson tide, that elephant Alabama, my stomping ground From Birmingham through Huntsville From Gump Town through Mobile Taking over Bama like Nick Saban, we a nightmare like Wes Craven. Nightmare like Wes Craven. Flexing hard like Arm and Hammer, still speaking that country grammar. This the heart of the South from Alabama.
and making it to the end of another week. You know what time it is. It's time for you, the Crimson Tide Faithful, to get your Alabama football fix. And what better way to do that than to be locked and loaded onto the hottest show in the streets, the best form of Crimson Tide football news, notes, and information you are going to find anywhere this being in my own words with yours truly, your man, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciate everybody for jumping on and checking us out here on a Friday as we're coming to you from Tuscaloosa, streaming this to you via YouTube. And speaking of YouTube, if you haven't done so, go ahead right now, hit that subscribe button, smash that subscribe button right now, turn on those notifications so that you can have all the updates, alerts, analysis on your favorite football program program the Alabama Crimson Tide we got a lot to get into on a Friday but we start off by addressing the man the myth the bona fide legend the guy maestro in the production room John Ivory how you feeling man man I'm feeling great so glad it is Friday we're about to have a very good show make sure y'all share the link to your friends and family and uh, let's get the show started Let's get the show rocking and rolling indeed. And we want you being a part of the show. And you can be a part of the show by calling 205-448-1358. Phone lines open and rolling. 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Want to hear from you, your thoughts, your viewpoints, your opinions when you talk Crimson Tide football. But getting into one huge update on Thursday, there was a report or a couple of reports that came out that had, you know, Alabama fans really concerned. And the report was there were at least five Crimson Tide players that tested positive for coronavirus. Now, according to the NCAA, the, uh, the, the organization, the league approved for student athletes in football, men's basketball and women's basketball to return to campuses on June the 1st. Even according to the SEC presidents, the in-person voluntary workouts would start on next Monday, being June the 8th. So Alabama football players got back on campus June the 1st. They were eager to work back out. They were eager to get into some action, getting some throws done, some practices in. And while using the million dollar bands facility, uh, some coronavirus tests were done, were conducted. And according to these reports, at least five players tested positive. Now, the names of these five players were not revealed. I don't I don't expect them to be revealed. Just seeing how you have confidentiality and the HIPAA violations and making sure that all those things are kept sort of kind of under wraps, but, you know, five players did test positive. Others have been in quarantine. So the University of Alabama, Nick Saban, is handling the situation very delicate, very delicately, very carefully, and hopefully, you know, this all kind of, you know, dies down, you know, for these players. Now, luckily, the virus, it does, it, um, the virus mainly really more so attacks the elderly and people with compromised immune systems and also young, young children that do not have developed, well-developed immune systems. So hopefully uh, these young men can get healthy, get cleared, and get back to you know preparing for a huge college football season. But that was just the update there coming from Thursday on the five players that tested positive. But we dive into topic one here of the conversation, ladies and gentlemen, on the show. And the tight end position it's not the most sexiest position. It's not the most controversial position, but it's one to where Nick Saban is concerned about, right? Nick Saban is concerned about, he's worried about at points, he's unsure about, he's uncertain about. And when um, you have those types of adjectives, words like uncertain, uh, uncomfortable, uneasy, not sure, worried, when you have those same adjectives in the same sentence as head coach Nick Saban, you know, you being the Alabama football faithful, you wonder, okay, what's going on? You know, what's going on with the program? What's going on? with the tight end position because as Alabama fans, we look at the Crimson Tide recruiting the best. We look at the Crimson Tide recruiting grade A. We look at the Crimson Tide and Nick Saban bringing an A1, and I'm not talking steak sauce here, but A1 players. And when we see these types of uh, very worrisome adjectives being put in the same place with head coach Nick Saban, there's a bit of concern and we as the fan base, or you as the fan base, would like to know why in the world 
this is going on. And Coach Saban has mentioned since, of course, last season that at that tight end position, he wants Alabama to have somebody that is explosive, a playmaker, a leader, somebody that can really step up and give that consistent production, the consistent quality, the consistent effort, and produce some uh, produce some big numbers here. So as we look at the tight end position, Somebody of whom I'm very happy to see back and have back in the crimson and white. Now, Jamil Billingsley, that young man from Chicago, is going to be a stud. Don't get me wrong there. But the guy that I'm excited to have back is none other than Miller Forstall entering his red shirt senior year at six foot five, 242 pounds. And Miller kind of remind Miller reminds me or or Miller kind of takes on the notion of uh, the guys that were ready to have a breakout junior season but were not able to just due to the injuries that happened they were not able to reach their full potential because of the injuries. Defensively, we look at Dylan Moses, Joshua McMillan and LeBron Ray, right? Last year was the junior year you know, for all three players. Well, it was a senior year for McMillan, but he's a graduate student. But basically, last year was supposed to be the big year for all three players on defense, Moses, McMillan, you know, and LeBron Ray. And it was supposed to have been their year for to create a major draft stock, a massive draft stock for the NFL. And of course, you being the Crimson Tide faithful, we, every last one of you and myself in the media, we all felt like, you have all three of those guys healthy on the field. The defense is a completely different story. It's not struggling the way it was last year. It's not, you know, confused the way it was last year. There was not, there would not be as much chaos as what took place last year. Most importantly, the communication would have been on the up and up on the defensive side of the football. So offensively, it's kind of the same thing here when you talk, you know, Miller Forrestal. He was prepared for a big, big year, but, you know, had to battle some injuries. And a little background information here on Miller. He came in the 2016 class as a three-star. He came in with Jalen Hurts, Quinnen Williams, Jonah Williams, Mac Wilson, that class right there. And, you know, Matt, uh, Miller Forrestal, he came out of Cartersville, Georgia, and, uh, the high school he played in, you know, Cartersville High School, he was a quarterback for the first three years until the program was introduced to a man that, you know, has the hair to be in a Pantene commercial. And he's also, by the face, looks like sunshine off of Remember the Titans. And when this young man took the campus in the 20. 16 season you know the coaches at cartersville were like miller we like you we appreciate you we value you young man but we gotta let this young man who's got this pantene hair we gotta have him be the quarterback right i mean this is the greatest thing since the invention of toaster strudel we gotta have this young man line up at quarterback and throw the football of course we all know that young man ended up being one trevor lawrence who is now with the Clemson Tigers. So, Forrestal had to be moved over to tight end. And he excelled at tight end. And he did quite well at tight end. So, comes to Alabama in 2016, arguably or definitely the most healthiest he's ever been in his career. The 2016 season, you know, Forrestal made some impactful plays as a freshman. And I know for, for people, when you look at the box score, the ESPN box score, the other college football stat, box scores and you see well he only had five catches for 73 yards that year you would look at me and go Steven where's the sauce like where's the drip like what did he really do what did this guy really bring to the table I mean five catches for 73 yards that don't sound like much of a thing to be all gung-ho about Steven so explain this right here well let me explain this right here so go back to the LSU game that 2016 season, the game in which Alabama won 10 to nothing in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Tiger Stadium. Well, Forrestal caught the biggest pass of the game from Jalen Hurts. He just found a way to get open on this play. It was a 23-yard reception along the sideline. The Tigers secondary completely lost this young man, made the catch. And that catch would parlay into two plays later, Jalen Hurts running 21 yards, cutting through the middle of the field for a touchdown. 
the only touchdown score in the game between the two programs, Crimson Tide getting that 10 to nothing win. So Forrestal had some impactful plays as a freshman. He was about to have a massive sophomore year in 2017. Unfortunately, we all know what happened in the game against Colorado State, week three of the season, the game in which Robert Foster went turbo boost. He caught like a five-yard slant pass, went 52 yards for a score, hit a backflip in the end zone. He and Cam Sims were dancing in the end zone. Well, what happened next? Uh, Miller Forrestal tore his knee up in that game. Tore his knee completely up. Ends up missing the remainder of the season. And then 2018, he sustained a broken ankle. And uh, Irv Smith took over that year. And then 2019, he played before stall barely 85%. He had, a fush, he had a foot issue, and then against Arkansas, he suffered a broken voice box. Got hit in the throat, uh, broken voice box, so um, he missed some time there. So after his freshman year, you look at the guy that's had foot issue, ankle issue, knee issue, throat issue. He has not been healthy since his freshman year for the first time. Now, he is finally healthy. Finally healthy, cutting the right way, bending the right way, moving the right way, running routes the right way. He's looking good right now. And, you know, he is loving the uh, the sports performance team of David Ballou and Dr. Matt Ray because these two and the regiment they've got him on, especially the speed regiment and the flexibi flexibility regiment that Coach uh, Dr. Ray has him on, it has allowed... Forrestal to really get his body back, to really work on training his body, getting his body back to where it was as a freshman and it was you know, in high school prior to you know, Alabama. So he's finally 100% healthy after all the injuries and as we're going through this global pandemic here. And, and this is a big thing. This is a big deal because, uh, you know, like I mentioned, uh, as, as good as the wide receivers are that Alabama has, that tight end position means something, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you go back to, you know, A.J. McCarron when he played at Alabama. The wide receivers he had, Amari Cooper was a big deal. Kevin Norwood, DeAndre White, Christian Jones, Kenny Bell, all of these guys were big deals. But Michael Williams at tight end, he meant something to A.J. McCarron. Michael Williams, a tight end, we're looking at a guy that caught 51 passes in his career, 503 receiving yards seven touchdowns right you look at you know jake coker in 2015 as important as calvin ridley was and our darius stewart and uh richard mulaney aka slotty pippen all those three guys with a bomb but oj howard you had to be on the lookout for where the six foot six 251 pounder running a four five 140 you had to be alert of where is 88 on the field and when you were not alerted of him ask the clemson tigers he burned you that was oj howard and of course where Tua Tonga Valoa is concerned, Jerry Judy, amazing. Henry Ruggs, amazing. Devontae Smith, amazing in 2018. And also Jalen Waddle. But Irv Smith Jr. was huge. Defenses had to know where is number 82 on the field. I got to keep an eye on him because if I don't, he's going to attack the hole in the zone. He's going to run the routes. He's going to catch passes. He's going to juke me out of my shoes like, mama, there goes my ankles. I'm going to get burned by this guy, Irv Smith. So I got to watch him. The tight end position, very much so important. You know, it is a big deal. And just a mere, another thought here. I remember it was about two years ago, I was actually in, in a conversation with, with a friend of mine, Josh Palais, former walk-on quarterback for the Crimson Tide. Kind of some context clues on why this guy's important. If you remember, Blake Barnett left Alabama weeks after, you know, Jalen Hurts secured the starting job in 2016. Now, Cooper Bateman and David Cornwell, they want to leave quickly also. They decide to stay for the remainder of the year, but if they would have left when they wanted to, the liable option, the, the number the number two guy or the next eligible guy that would have been the backup to Jalen Hurts if the young man would have sustained an injury would have been the walk-on in Josh Pale. So, I was talking to Pale about two years ago, about one Miller Forrestal, 
And he kind of giggled on the phone. He was like, Steven, <laughs> it's funny how you mentioned Miller because the quarterbacks would always be in the film room and we would watch the tape with Coach Lane Kiffin. And it was always number 87 just kept getting open. Miller was always open. He wasn't the biggest guy. He wasn't the strongest guy. He wasn't the fastest guy. But that darn dude was just crafty. That darn dude was deceptive. He just found ways to get open every single time. So here's a guy in Miller Forrest, all that. Senior guy, leadership guy. Alabama has got this junior, senior Layton team under Nick Saban. Saban loves his freshmen, but to have a junior, senior Layton group that saw what has happened the last two years, especially last year, they got national championship on their mind. And at the tight end position, Jaleel Billings is going to be a beast. But at the tight end position, keep your eyes on Miller Forrestall. He's back. He's healthy. He's athletic. He is ready to put in some serious work here. We go to our first break here on the show. Don't touch that down. We're just rocking and rolling here on a Friday. Upon our return, we unpack your questions, your phone calls, your thoughts, your tweets, your concerns after this. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Whitwill Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WhitwillSports.com and get your title towel today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to Touchdown Alabama. Alabama.com today and roll tide. We're back inside the action here on a Friday on the best form of Crimson Tide football news, notes, and information in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. It is your time, Bama Nation, 205-448-1358, the number to call in and let your voice be heard. And we go to our first caller of the day. You're live here on the show. What's on your mind? What's up, Steven, my brother? How you been? I can't complain, man. Man, I've just been loving all this good news. Been coming out of Tuscaloosa, all these transfer portal players. I mean, all this overhyped talk about a tight end that's not even in the top 100 tight ends in the SEC. Man, look, down here in LSU, we loving it, man. We know we're going back to back, man. I promise you, Miles Brennan for Heisman, man. What you say about that? Miles Brennan for Heisman, nah. Nah, I don't know. I don't know about Miles, man. Look, Steven, be honest. You're a real smart guy, a real true football man. What school you know can give you the type of talent LSU can provide? I'm talking about Jamal Chase, Terrence Marshall, Eric Gilbert, uh, five-star Trey Palmer, five-star Keyshawn Booty. Racy McMath, there's no other college program that could produce the type of offensive of firepower LSU has. Don't you agree with that? I mean, I mean, Alabama produced no offensive firepower. You look at Jalen Water, you look at Devontae Smith, you look at. You stop right there. You look That's at Najee Harris, you look at uh, you, John Mechie up here, you look at Slade Bolden up here, you look at Xavier Williams up here, you look at Javon Bank who's about to do something. Hey, look. I'm not even gonna take too much time. I just want to call it, man. I love your show, man. You're you're, you're hey, a good hey, commentator. I, 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 hey, Jay, I appreciate you too, man. I mean, th th this yeah, is man. this is what it's about. It's about the passion of the game. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Steven. You know, I just a lot of Ab a lot of Alabama fans they get mad at me for commenting and coming in, but I just love football, man. I like I like Alabama. They they're a good team, a great team. You know, I'm just trying to have some fun, man. That's all it is. I feel you. I feel you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should, but uh, I think it's going to be a great game this year. I just, in my heart, I feel like Alabama losing too much. They don't have enough experience in the secondary. They don't have a real true leader. 
uh, on a defensive line like I've always seen out of them. I'm talking about that one true name that you know, he's a dog. He's going to come get you. They don't have that right now. I mean, LeBron Ray is still to be determined. But other than that, I mean, I like Barmore. more. But, I mean, they still got to grow up some more, man. But I, 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 your strongest position is linebacker than me, man. But besides that, man, y'all got a lot of question marks, man. Sir Kane, last year, he left a lot to be desired. I mean, he got burnt a lot. I mean, I, I don't even think he a top, a top 10 corner in college football. I'm going to be honest with you. Sir Kane is a bust. I'm going to just be honest with y'all. So, I'm going to go on the name of this with that, man. Y'all be blessed, man, and go Tigers. All right, Jay, you know what? Looking forward to this LSU game. Looking forward to this Alabama-LSU game this year. So, Jay, if LSU win this thing, man, I will. I don't think they will win, but if they do win, you know what? I'm going to buy you a steak. If they do win, I will get you a steak. Man, I appreciate this. I appreciate that, Steven, man. But uh, I'm, I'm telling you, man, we're going to win it again, man. The only oh, question, oh, man. Oh, 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 no, man. Hey, we'll see. But, hey, appreciate you listening to the show, man. Let me say this one thing. You know what? Let me know we're going to win it. When Clemson suffered that devastating injury to their wide receiver, Justin Ross, that let me know right then and there, man. There's not a team in college football that can match up player for player with LSU on the offense and defensive side of the ball. If people think I'm being biased, all you got to do is go do your research on the type of talent LSU has coming back. Man, it's devastating. Go Tigers. Good night, y'all. We got Jay coming in here hot, man. I don't know about that issue, but hey, that that game, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be at that game. We are gonna see about that game. But we go to our next caller, and it's Waylon, who is back on here. Waylon, brother, man, we we missed you, man. How you been? Man, it's Friday. I'm back on TDA. I'm gonna tell you something, man. I've been looking. I believe John passed around the cup this week. You been down to the shop? You got a touch up, bro. You looking good. I mean, I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I've been down to the shop, man. I've been down to the shop. Was talking some, uh, some Bama football with some guys in the shop, and uh, had to get the fresh haircut as I was talking to those guys. Yeah, you got it looking good on there. Yeah, I tell you what, we've had a lot. Uh, I miss being on TDA. I had to go out of town there for a few days, but I tell you what, it's always good to be back on TDA with family here. Hope everybody in the chat's doing well. I know we've. Uh, had a busy week this week. Uh, Coach Die passing, Coach Majors. This transfer uh, transfer portal is going to make me jump out the window. Rugs getting injured. I tell you what, it's been a rough week, Stephen. What do you think is going to happen down here in Alabama with all this coronavirus testing? Five and six people are positive. What's going to happen, bro? Well, right now what's going on is, of course, Nick Saban in the university is handling the situation delicately right now. And I, I was talking with a friend of mine. And he actually brought up a, an interesting point. So what Oklahoma State is doing, and I believe Alabama may take this as well, but what Oklahoma State's doing is for those that have tested positive, they kind of put them in a isolated kind of a quarantine quarters. And for the ones that have, and for if anybody has been around those guys that have tested positive, they test those guys as well. Now, they don't isolate them until they test them. So once they test the players that the guys have been around and they test positive as well, then they may have their own separate quarters. But I believe Nick Saban, Athletic Director Greg Byrne, this medical staff, they will have an idea. They will have a plan in place. And uh, you kind of sort of, you kind of sort of had an idea this might happen just due to everybody trying to get back so quickly, wanting to have football, everybody getting back on June 1st, and the players trying to get back to work together and get that bond, that chemistry back on the field. So, you know, hopefully they can get this cleaned out. Players can, you know, get back healthy. We can really continue to monitor this thing. Yeah, exactly. We can get everybody healthy with this COVID-19 and get over all this other stuff that's going on in the world. But I didn't write a poem today, but I got a poem that's, uh, that uh, Coach Bryant uh, always carried a poem with him uh, uh, everywhere he went in his coat uh, pocket. And I picked out the one that uh, most people have probably heard uh, quite a bit. I think it will uh, suit what's going on. And if you listen to it real closely, it will uh, it will uh, show you what to do in times of need. So uh, once again, it's glad to be back on TDA. I hope everybody has a great weekend, and we will be back Monday. Maybe we'll try to do us a Tyrone Proto uh, poem for Monday. But I'm going to read this one here, Stephen, get out of here and let somebody else get in the queue. This is the beginning of a new day. 
God has given me this day to use as I will. I can waste it or use it for good. What I do today is very important because I am exchanging the day of my life for it. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever, leaving something in its place. I have traded for it. I want it to be a gain, not a loss, good, not evil, success, not failure, in order that I shall not forget the price I paid for it. So I hope that hits home with everybody and, and helps a situation, out, a situation out here with uh, uh, the passing of Mr. Floyd and uh, we get our minds and, and, and get back together and, and uh, act like we should act in the United States of America. So we'll see everybody Monday at 6 o'clock. Have a good weekend, Stephen. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. Appreciate that, Wagon. Always a joy having Wagon in for his palms and just, and just what he means and just the, the energy that he brings to the show every time that he calls in. But kind of interesting, an interesting topic before we go to break here, just going back to the offensive line. You know, Alabama's offensive line, among other positional units, they're out here on the million-dollar band facility, the practice field, getting that work in. And this is a line that prides itself on being dangerous, on being nasty, on being physical, on imposing their will. And I've mentioned this before, anything less than the Joe Moore Award would be a huge disappointment for this group, especially when you dive into the five stars on this group. Landon Dickerson, a former five star. Evan Neal, a former five star. Alex Leatherwood, a former five star. Uh, Deontay Brown, a former four star. And you've got so many guys that can rotate you know, on this line, plug and play. Guys that have a lot of, of diversity on this line. You have guys that can play guard and center. Guys that can play guard and tackle. Just so many you got a lot of depth here so Kyle Flood is definitely have he's definitely got to be tickled pink to have this much talent this much versatility this much explosiveness to work with so you know this year's offensive line going to pride itself on protecting Mac Jones or Bryce Young or whomever wins you know this job at quarterback money's still on Mac Jones there and also protecting and open up holes for the likes of Najee Harris in the running game we're going to go to Another break here on the show. Continue to line up the call in line, line up the YouTube chat line as well. 205 448 1358. But I'm going to let your voice be heard. 205 448 1358. When we return, we talk about one Dylan Moses. He is already on a preseason award watch list, and we'll touch it up after this. want delicious homestyle cooking, sushi, and hibachi, check out Otoro Hibachi in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. At home and you can't get away from the TV because the Crimson Tide is about to score? Don't worry. Delivery is also available through Waiter and Crimson To Go. That's Otoro Hibachi in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And make sure you let them know the good folks at Touchdown Alabama sent you. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to touchdown alabama.com today and roll tide we are back in on a friday a tg a tg excuse me if edition of the show how to show on the streets in my own words yours truly stephen m smith of touchdown alabama magazine got the man john ivory in the building as always appreciate you guys for tuning in to check this out as always be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that you can have the best in news notes updates and analysis on alabama football but we get into one dylan moses dylan moses of whom uh back for his red shirt junior year got another chance to relive the junior year the money year for him and Already, he becomes the first Crimson Tide player to have his name on a preseason award watch list during this time is where we see a lot of these lists start to you know open up and 
you know, different websites, different uh, media outlets put out these lists. Usually starts in June, whether it's the Field Steel list or the Athlon Sports list or, you know, different, you know, award foundations. They put out their different preseason lists. So right now, the Lot Impact Trophy award watch list came out on Thursday and Dylan Moles has found his name on that list. Uh, the award is named after Pro Football and College Football Hall of Fame running lot. The word impact is an acronym. It actually stands for integrity, maturity, performance, academics, uh, community and tenacity and it's given to the best defensive player in college football that distributes or demonstrates all of those attributes now the since to, since the award was since the award was first originated in 2004 from the Pacific Club Impact Foundation in California only one top player has won the honor so far that was D'Amico Ryans in 2005 so Dylan Moses trying to become the second top player to take home this honor here and this is a guy that you know as we've talked about on this show came in 2017 as a five star was he was offered a scholarship when he was in the eighth grade in high school in Louisiana to come to the Crimson Tide, the young man at 6'3", 235 pounds in that 2017 class here. And an individual that 2017, he was the, made the all SEC freshman team, 30 tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, one and a half sacks, one interception was thrown into the fire there, seeing how going back to that season, in 2017, Alabama had so many injuries at the linebacker position. Guys were dropping like flies. So Jeremy Pruitt kind of looks around, sees Dylan Moses. Hey, you're an able body. Get in there. Let's see what you can do and put Dylan Moses out there. And the young man, he, he had success. Had a lot of success before encountering a foot injury prior to, I believe, the college football playoff semifinal there. Uh, against Clemson, but that was his freshman year. Sophomore year, 2018, took a big step forward, did Mr. Moses. 86 tackles to lead the team, 10, uh, 10 tackles for loss there, three and a half sacks, a pass breakup, a quarterback hurry, a forced fumble. So his sophomore year took a big step forward, was a finalist for the Buckus Award, really strong communicator. I've mentioned on a previous show that he kind of reminds me, or he does remind me, of what Sean Dion Hamilton provided for the Crimson Tide in the 2016 season. Sean Dion, very cerebral, smart, intelligent, great IQ, very exceptional communicator on the field. But along with being just, but, but along with being that and doing those things, he was also a huge playmaker, flying in the gaps, shooting in the holes, uh, avoiding offensive linemen, sticking folks in the backfield, creating negative plays, sacking the quarterback, playing in coverage. Sean Dion was a playmaker along with being an outstanding communicator. And so those same qualities you see here, you know, in one Dylan Moses, not just a strong playmaker, but also an incredible communicator. And, and here's a guy that, you know, last year he got a chance to watch from the outside looking in about what looking in and he knew that if I would have been on this field, the outcome would have been much differently. I I know People look at Steven, football is a team game. It takes more than one player. It takes more than one individual. It takes more than one coach. Football is a team game. It's a brotherhood. It's a team atmosphere. And believe you me, I 100% you know, understand that. But from the mindset of an athlete, you know, I used to be an athlete. I wasn't a Division One college football athlete, but an athlete nonetheless. A lot, of, a lot of what goes through the minds of athletes, especially when they are highly talented, highly skilled, highly experienced, you know, five-star guys, when they're not on the field, whether it's offense or defense, in their mind, it's I let the team down. If I would have been on this field, the outcome would have been different. If I would have been on this field, I would have made an impact. If I would have been on this field, I would have had the ability to put guys in the right spot, set guys up in the right area, make sure that everybody knows what the call is on the field, everybody knows if we're making a check, if we're making an audible, that we get into that check, we get into that audible, and we're able to go to work. So he was able to see, he being Moses, from the sidelines, man, I want to be out here. Man, I hate being hurt. 
man, if I could just get on this field, I know that I could have made a difference. And you out there being the Alabama football faithful, as I as I hear a lot of you know conversations, that's how a lot of you feel. A lot of you feel like if he would have been out here. If Dylan Moses would have been out here, this could have been a completely different story. We appreciate what Xavier McKinney did. We did. We appreciated his toughness. We appreciated his effort. We appreciated his exceptional play. We appreciated, you know, him taking on the responsibility, right, of not just playing safety, but also coming down in the box, pushing somebody on the defensive line into a gap. Pushing a linebacker that was not in their right place in their right place. Helping Shane Lee and Christian Harris kind of get acclimated to what would be expected of them. And then at the same time, also having the wherewithal to jump back in the play, right, and still create a tackle. Jump back in the play, still create an interception. Jump back in the play, still break up a pass up, still force a fumble and do those things that we're known to see him do from the safety position, but even though we appreciate what X did and we did, at the same time, we also know that that was a lot of stress on him. And having a guy like a Dylan Moses on that defense, you know that you know X wouldn't have had you know, that much stress on him because Dylan would have been communicating things from the linebacking front on up. So, you know, Moses being back, this this is his chance. Moses being back, this is his opportunity. He's back with his two coaches that he has worked with, you know, since high school and uh, Dave Ballou and, and, and Dr. Ray when he went when, when all three of them were at IMG Academy down there in Bradenton, Florida, upon the hire of both of those guys, you just saw the smile on Dylan's face. He was giddy, he was giddy with glee, giddy with anticipation, just excited that you know, my boys are back, my guys are back. The coaches that I had with me in high school, the coaches that were riding in the cut with me, the coaches that were in the click with me, from my high school days, they back. They're going to make sure that I stay healthy. They're going to make sure that I play every game this season. They're going to make sure that I've got the flexibility. I've got the strength. I've got the speed. i got everything I need to have to not just be a communicator, but to be a beast, be a baller, be a playmaker, and put myself in a situation where I can gain back what I lost last year, which is, not just on field time with my brothers, not just the opportunity to push my team, my defense to an SEC championship, push my defense to a college football playoff and a national championship, but also be back to put myself in a situation to where I'm a top five pick. I'm a top 10 pick where, you know, uh, Guys like Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper Jr. and Bucky Brooks and Daniel Jeremiah and Rich Eisen and all of these quote-unquote experts that study the draft and eat it up like it's Captain Crunch cereal, they now can look at me and be like, okay, we see now what Alabama's defense is supposed to look like because Dylan Moses is back here in the forefront doing his thing, but he is on the uh, – a lot impact trophy watching this to represent you know the 2020 season and uh, I would not be surprised if he ends up on the Chuck Benderick award watching this the Bronco Nagurski award watching this the uh, Dick Butkus award watching this Dylan Moses will find himself on about five to six of these lists just due to the type of player he is the type of leader he is the type of quality of person he is and he's going to be He's going to be vocal this year. I have a strong feeling Dylan Moses, who at times doesn't like to talk a lot, but I feel like this year he is going to be very vocal because once again, he saw firsthand from the outside looking in, this is what happens when we don't communicate. This is what happens when we don't pay attention to detail, when we don't focus, when we don't read our keys and read our cues. It's a snowball effect. You know, Alabama loses football games. The coaches get upset. The assistants get upset, the support staff gets upset, the players get upset, most importantly, you as the fans, you guys get upset because you are the ones that drive the excitement, you drive the content, you drive the expectation, you drive the meter, you drive the meter. It's, it's, you, it's the passion that you guys have that the players feed off of. So, so they know firsthand what they got to do for the upcoming season and Dylan Moses will definitely be in the forefront of that but congrats to him on already being on the Lot Impact Trophy Award watching this but we take another break here 
on the show. Don't touch that dial. Just getting you cranked up, warmed up here. Upon our return, we dive into more of your phone calls, your thoughts, your tweets, your text messages, your questions and concerns. And it's coming after this. Town Menswear in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to Touchdown Alabama. Alabama.com today and roll tide. And we are into the action, folks, on a Friday. Hottest show on the streets here, in my own words, with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. It's your time, Crimson Tide Nation, 205-448-1358. And I'm going to call in to let your voice be heard, 205-448-1358. We actually have a caller in the queue right now. What's on your mind tonight? I went in my own words, Carl. What's going on? Roll Tide. Roll Tide to you, sir. How we feeling? Brad, I think, I think we lost the call there. If, if you can call back, call her, please do so. Definitely want to hear from you. 205-448-1358, the number to be a part of the show to talk Crimson Tide football or whatever else may be on your mind. 205-448-1358. But we actually got a question here in the YouTube chat line. Uh, John Ivory, take it away. Question from Ronnie Collier says, who could be a team captain upcoming season? Team captain this upcoming season. Good question there coming from Ronnie. Offensively, team captain, I look at I look at uh, Devontae Smith can be one, definitely. I look at Devontae Smith. I look at Alex Leatherwood. Um, Landon Dickerson could be one. Keep your eyes on him offensively. Uh, Najee Harris can be one. Definitely look at him. Uh, Mac Jones, absolutely. So Mac Jones, Dickerson, uh, Najee Harris, Alex Netherwood, Devontae Smith, all those offensively. Defensively, team cap uh, team captain defensively. Dylan, definitely. Aside from Dylan, Barmore could be one. Uh, let's see here. Aside from Dylan and Barmore. LeBron Ray, maybe. Put a maybe by that one. So, so right now, defensively. I would definitely go Dylan and Barmore. Definitely go Dylan and Barmore in terms of the uh, in terms of the Alabama uh, defense. But appreciate Ronnie there for for writing that question there on the YouTube chat line. But another topic here, as you guys are getting your thoughts together, once again, 205-448-1358, the number to call in and let your voice be heard here on the show. And it's one uh, Fidarian Mathis. Fidarian Mathis, the 6'4", 312-pound defensive lineman out of Louisiana. Fidarian Mathis entering his red shirt junior year. And a guy that's got a bunch of experience. He's got a lot of experience playing football for the Crimson Tide. Mathis, who has played in 27 career games here so far in his career. Here we're looking at the number of tackles. He's got 45 tackles in his career. Excuse me, 45 tackles in his career. He can play a defensive end and defensive tackle as a freshman in 2017. Of course, he redshirted that national championship season. 2018, he made the all SEC freshman team. 2019 and playing in those 12 games, including two starts here. 27 tackles, two quarterback hurries, and a forced fumble. But the reason why we're talking Fidarian is he dropped the tweet. On today, either it was today or yesterday, but Fidarian Mathis dropped a tweet about how even in this emotional, raw, emotional time that we are in in the United States where you have the coronavirus pandemic and people without jobs, you're depending on 
you know, unemployment. You're depending on you know, stimulus checks and just different ways to try to push through and get through. So with the coronavirus and also with the uh, uh, police brutality and the racial injustice going on, just a melting pot of things going on in our world today. Just, you know, Mathis is able to kind of take a reflection and, and be like, I'm happy to be on campus with my brothers. I'm happy to be on campus with my teammates. But before we continue that, we have a caller in the queue here. You're live on In My Own Words. What's going on tonight? Hello, uh, Stephen and John. How's it going this evening? Going there, fantastic. This seems, like our, this, this seems like one of our Perry County people. What's going on? Oh, all is well, man. I'm just excited. I was listening to the show and just enjoying everything, and I just like the enthusiasm you guys carry and maintaining and keeping up with what's going on at Touchdown Alabama and Tuscaloosa sports as a whole, football. I'm just excited. Just want to know you guys are doing an amazing job, and, and I'm real proud of you. Enjoy listening to you on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Just keep up the good work, guys. Keep up the good work. You're doing a great job. Appreciate it. Continue to listen to us, okay? I sure will. Y'all have an amazing weekend. And take care always enjoy now. the per- always enjoy the love from the Perry County community. Really appreciate those guys, you know, stepping up and showing us some love here on the show. But getting back to Fidarian Mathis here for a minute, just despite everything that's going on in today's society, he is just happy to be with his teammates, be with his brothers, be with his guys, going through practices, going through getting the individual workout in, the individual action in, because you know this Crimson Tide team, this team. Uh, John, uh, I've seen quite a few teams in Alabama under, you know, Coach Saban as I've gotten the chance to cover this program for Touchdown Alabama Magazine. But I've seen quite a few teams have a hunger that we want to win. This is our moment and we're taking it. This team right here is taking on, you know, that mindset. And and to see them, uh, you know, on one accord, to see them all in, to see them all focused, as we've seen the videos that, of course, the the trainer, you know, Rose Simon Jr. has put out on social media. It, It just looks like within those videos, John, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it just looks like in those videos, John, that everybody is sort of dialed into its championship or it's all on us. Do you kind of feel the same way, John? Yeah, everybody's ready. This is a redemption season, so to speak, for everybody, I think, especially on defense. And everybody's ready. Everybody's working. I'm excited about this season coming up. Every, every, everybody's dialed in. Everybody's dialed in. I mean, from the offensive line to the wide receivers, watching video of, of John Mechie putting moves on guys, uh, Javon Baker, the freshman, putting moves on guys, Jalen Water and that ridiculously sick toe-tap catch he had putting moves on guys, Devontae Smith smooth as the other side of the pillow, you know, putting moves on guys. This team's ready. This team's focused. This team is locked in. But it was just awesome, you know, seeing that tweet from, uh, you know, Fidarian, you know, Mathis. It doesn't matter what's, you know, going on in today's society. And, yes, you know, he may be – yes, he's bothered by it. Yes, he's hurt by it. Yes, people are frustrated with what's going on. Yes, people are angry about what's going on. But to see, you know, this young man have a mindset of because I'm back in Tuscaloosa – because I'm back in Alabama, because I'm back around my guys that can pick me up, that can make me laugh, that can make me smile, that I can conversate with, and we're all fighting for one common goal. And that's, honestly, that's the beauty of sports and athletics in itself, to where you have so many people that come from different walks of life, different spectrums of life, different backgrounds, different socioeconomic situations, and they come together on one team for a common goal. Let's score points, let's play defense, let's get first downs, let's create turnovers, let's win football games. Let's win football games, let's make fans proud of us, let's make the coaches proud of us, let's make the team proud of us, let's make you know ourselves as players proud of ourselves because we're doing something that's bigger than us. We're doing something that's bigger than, you know, bigger than, you know, life and sometimes the situation that we're in, we are, you know, making things better by providing a smile to the faces of 
so many people so big ups there to Fidarian Mathis looking forward to seeing a big year from him especially on that defensive line and either defensive end or defensive tackle but taking another break here on the show as always 205-448-1358 but I'm going to call in and let your voice be heard want to hear from you your thoughts your viewpoints 205-448-1358 but upon our return we touch on a little bit of Alabama secondary, Alabama defensive backs after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to touchdown Alabama.com today and roll tide. Back in, folks, on a Friday from the break on the hottest show on the streets, best form of Crimson Top football news, notes, information, and alerts you will find anywhere else in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. And we jump into now the Crimson Tide secondary. Crimson Tide secondary and the challenges that are the biggest challenges that it's going to face this season in terms of, of opposing wide receivers. And the, kind of the reason why I brought this up was as great as the Alabama receiving core was a season ago, and that receiving core was fantastic, that receiving core was phenomenal, that receiving core was great. But you look at the guys that give Alabama's defensive backs a ton of problems in college football – it's, it's those guys that can not only run great routes, but, but it's those guys that can get up, box out, body up on Alabama's defensive backs, keep them away from the football, or shield them from the football, as, as, I, as I should say. Make those big catches, come down with the ball, and just you know make plays. So the guys that can be more than just quick, savvy route runners. Quick, savvy route runners are important. But guys that can box out, guys that can pluck the ball out of the air, guys that can snatch 50-50 balls, guys that will out-compete Alabama's you know, defensive backs for those passes in the air to where it's anybody's football. So th those are the guys that normally give you know, Alabama the biggest problem. And I feel like the reason why the secondary will be more so prepared for it this year is due to there's a mixture of guys on Alabama's wide receiving core, right, that, that are big, that are going to be big time players. So you've got the crafty, smooth route runners like Devontae Smith, like Jalen Waddle, like a John Mechie who's growing, like a a Slade Bolden who's growing. But then you also have those big body guys that want to embarrass defensive backs like their side with their size, like a Javon Baker, also a Trey Sean Holden. At six foot three. So now Alabama's got that that mixture of guys to where when the tie is at practice, when the tie is at practice, you've got you, you're gonna have those guys at wide receiver that will look to want to embarrass this secondary, challenge this secondary, go at this secondary, attack this secondary, go after the secondary. And this is good work for those guys. This is good work for Patrick Sertan. This is good work for Josh Chope. This is good work for Ronald Williams Jr. This is good work for Jangan Armour Davis, for Jordan Battle, for Daniel Wright, for all those guys. Because now, when you look at the receivers Alabama's going to face in college football this year, it's going to face a mixture of guys. And as we go through the players that Alabama's going to face this season at wide receiver, number one off the bat, you're going to take on Amon Ray St. Brown out of the University of Southern California. Now, St. Brown is more so of the route runner at 6'1", 6'2". His brother, Equinemius St. Brown, out of Notre Dame, was more so 6'5". So he was more of a jump ball target, while 
you know, Ray St. Brown is good. He's talented. He's kind of like his brother was, kind of like that possession receiver. Not really much of a wow, wow, wow factor guy, though he did have over 1,000 yards receiving just a season ago, and he will look to challenge Alabama, especially with Kedon Slovis as the quarterback for the Trojans. But – you know, at that same time, you know, when I look at him, not a guy that will really, you know, he, he, he's a guy that's that's deceptive. He's a guy you have to look for, but kind of more of that, of that route runner guy. So the likes of, of a Patrick Sertain or the likes of a Josh Job, you know, playing against uh, Devontae Smith, playing against Jalen Waddle, playing against John Metchie will really help you prepare for that type of guy, Amon Ray. Uh, St. Brown, they're out of USC. The next guy that Alabama is going to have on the schedule, you're going to have George Pickens of the Georgia Bulldogs week three. Now, this is more of your jump ball guy. This is your 50-50 ball guy. This is your contested catches. I'm going to elevate up in the air. Mono and mono, my guy against that guy over there. He's a jump ball guy. He's a contested catches target. So, for Alabama... This is where having a Javon Baker comes in at practice. This is where having a Treshawn Holden comes in at practice. Having that big body elevating and these defensive backs trying to trying to um, hinder, trying to neutralize, trying to limit, trying to negate that guy from being able to back box out like a basketball player and make that catch over them. So having that technique, being able to defend, the likes of Baker and Holden in practice and showcase that technique that Coach Saban has been teaching and instructing, that Charles Kelly at safety coach has, has safety coach has gone over, and that Carl Scott as cornerbacks coach has gone over. Being able to defend those guys in practice will prepare you for a George Pickens coming out of Georgia, one of the uh, marquee guys. But next guy here on the list is one uh, Jamon Osborne of Texas A&M. Jamon Osborne is a bit, he's a bit of a tweener type to me. I mean, he he is a compact, solid, sound route runner, can work back to the quarterback, has a very extensive route tree. But at the same time, Osborne at 6'2", he likes to get up. He likes to pluck the ball out of the air. He likes to be physical. He looks at kind of the other receivers that he plays with and is like, and is like just like y'all can get up, just like y'all got hops, just like y'all can elevate, I can do the same thing as well. So, you know, once again, having that mixture of guys on the roster for Alabama at that wide receiver position going to help you to be better more so focus locked in on Osborne. Now, the thing with Osborne is he can play in the slot, and he can also play on the outside. So for guys like Josh Job, physical, not too physical, not too handsy, jam, run with the guy, playing on the outside. But he can also play in that slot. So whomever starts in that slot position, whether it's a Patrick Sertan, whether it could be a freshman like a Brian Branch, who knows? Maybe if even Nick Saban chooses to slide, Jalen Armour Davis inside, or Marcus Banks, or you know Ronald Williams Jr., who, whomever plays at nickel, that slot corner position, and you're going to be lined up on uh, Jamon Osborne. T- there are more times than not, he's going to want to take the inside. He'll probably do a double move or a slant and go and try to go to the outside, but more times than not, when I watch Jamon Osborne play, he typically likes to take the inside on certain routes. So, you know, once again, having these guys on your roster, you being the Alabama defensive secondary that you compete against every single day, is going to better prepare you for a guy like Jamon Osborne. Moving on down the line here, we've got one. Uh, we got one Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase of LSU. So. As good as a uh, Terrace Marshall is, and Terrace Marshall is a big time player, but for the national guys, for the you know, for the national media, for the national commentators, they look at Jamar Chase as the big time factor, as the main guy, as the marquee receiver, as the potential you know first round pick here. And for someone who's coming off a Fred Bolitnikoff Award winning season, here's another guy that. Plays in the slot, can play outside, but play in the slot. But will Jamar Chase grow a more diversified route tree? I'm just saying, when I watched Jamar Chase play, I saw a lot more of 
slant and go and just straight go routes. I didn't see a lot of in routes. I didn't see a lot of post patterns. I didn't see a lot of dig plays. I didn't see a lot of that. So, you know, with, and him diversifying his route tree, he's good. He's dynamic. And once again, playing against these guys that you're going to play against in practice will help Alabama's defensive backs prepare for him, but definitely want to see uh, Jamar Chase, you know, diversify that route tree out a bit more. And then last but not least, here we got uh, we got Seth Williams out of Auburn, another one of those jump ball receivers. Bo Nix threw him quite a few jump balls this past year. Whether those balls were too long, whether they were too short, and he had to adjust and contort his body and work back to the ball, made some big plays. So having, once again, guys like Javon Baker and Treshawn Holden will help with that. But that's just some guys there that Alabama will face this season that the defensive secondary got to be ready, got to be prepared for in the upcoming campaign. But, folks, if you want the best in news, notes, information, and coverage on your Crimson Tide, it's very simple and easy to do. You get this by downloading the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You do this by downloading it from the iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple. Google Play Store if you just so happen to have the Android phone. For your audio listening needs, we got you covered on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, Overcast.com. FM or iHeartRadio. If the good and gracious Lord sees fit, I'll be back on Monday continuing the conversation as Bama football. But until next time, husbands love your wives. Wives appreciate, value those husbands. Children continue to do those things legitimately now to not be bored. Get those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. Protect yourself, protect the loved ones around you. Till next time, folks, I'm your man, Stephen M. Smith, and this has been In My Own Words. Thank <laughs> you.